You're listening to the Modern Saxophonist Podcast. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Modern Saxophonist Podcast. I'm your host, Mark MacArthur, and uh, and I got Eric, my co-host, with me. Eric, say hi to everyone. Hello, hello. Well, it's that time of year, and it's back to school. And uh, I've been watching some of the news, and it's so funny how uh, our local Las Vegas reports is uh, so big on getting all the parents ready for their back to school go to the back to school sales make sure you go to the specific mall that we're reporting at because they're probably helping us out <laughs> <laughs> so uh hey we're not here to sell you anything today but what we are here to do is uh is hopefully help you get a little bit of a checklist on some things that will help you be ready for uh, ready for this school year. And if you haven't thought about some of these things, maybe you should think about it and, uh, and add it. So, uh, look, uh, wanted to start with some equipment and, uh, but I'm going to toss it to you, Eric, because, uh, and you, you got any advice for, oh, absolutely. for everybody? Yeah. Um, cool. N- nothing. There's a lot, a lot here. Uh, there's nothing more important than having working, a working saxophone. Uh, there's nothing more frustrating than going in, to your first day and you get nothing but a squeak when you play. So let's, let's talk about a few things there. Um, you know, if you're renting from your school, oftentimes they're not in the best condition. So, uh, you know, double check that you have sec- secured screws and, and your springs are attached, uh, check your pads. A lot of times there's a leaky pad there. Um, you know, the mouthpiece oftentimes is going to be something that they just threw in and didn't put a lot of thought into. Um, and it's a big part of, uh, of our sound. So, uh, look into a, a mouthpiece that you can purchase, uh, online. Um, check that you have a ligature that is, uh, working and secures the reed. And, uh, you know, speaking of reeds, um, get a whole box of reeds. Um, why buy yeah. one at a time? Reeds are a very tricky thing and all of them are different and some of them play and some of them don't. So, uh, get a, get a whole box, get them online. Um, you know, there's a lot of different sites that you can right. go to and, and get boxes of reeds. Can I just add that that those 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 guys that go in and buy a whole box, uh, what you're going to find is you're going to get about seven that function and three that don't, and then out of the seven that function, you're going to probably find two that are really good performance reads um, that that will respond when you need it to, and the others, man, eh, maybe not so much. And so so uh, it's usually it's pretty typical that that happens. Yeah, um, for sure. So. And and I hope you don't mind, Eric. I just like to throw in there um, as well. Uh, in my experience in this last little bit, I've I've used a little bit of not to not to plug them, but um, uh, some synthetic reeds for uh, for 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 something. And I, I found that um, that some of those synthetic reeds can get a a really nice high quality response. Um, for the marching field and will help protect your, um, uh, save you some money because if you happen to brush against the person next to you, it's not going to chip. Uh, so I, I check, check those out and find which one is the best for you. I'm not going to throw out any specific brands because, because I don't want to, you know, they're not marketing on here. So there it is. Yeah. Yeah. You got anything else? Yeah, I think uh, one more thing would just be, uh, uh, you know, the neck strap. You might want to make sure there's one in your case. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. You know, so, but yeah, I mean, uh, that's and that's most of it there. Just making sure good. that you have a working instrument so that you can show up and and produce a good sound. Good. I, I like that neck strap thing. Listen, folks, don't just get the na- nice fancy one or anything else. Get the one that's comfortable for you. Yeah. And uh, look at look at it around. If you're if you're on one of those bigger instruments, um, they do have some harnesses, but they also have um, some straps that 
that um, displace the weight a little bit different. And if you've got a bad back, there's 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 some solutions out there for you. I just encourage you to research uh, research that. Um, maybe we can have that on. We can talk about neck straps or back straps in uh, another podcast, sure. but not here, not today. <laughs> nope. But go so what, make sure next? you got <laughs> you got to have one. That's the whole point. <laughs> yes, that's the point. <laughs> but what, what's next, Mark? Oh, okay. Um, for me, uh, a big thing is organization. Uh, when, if you want to be effective, and I, I, I have to say there is a huge difference when we start talking about improvement uh, as, a, as an instrumentalist that typically people who are unorganized and allow their time to get away from them – uh, typically, we find that their improvement is not as rapid and you're not as happy about your results. So um, I would strongly encourage you to get a calendar. I know all of your teachers are telling you to get a can- calendar. Your band directors are begging you to use the calendar that they gave you. And, uh, and, and the thing is, if you got a smartphone, it's right there at the palm of your hand. And, uh, and it links up with, you know, that app links up with Google and whatever. So you can, it is so interconnected. There's absolutely no reason why you can't be connected, uh, have access to a, a calendar. So, um, so here's in that I have two things. Make sure you plan your practice time, make it intentional, make sure you get it in and that the time that you dedicated to it, you you actually completed and made made sure that it happened. The next thing is schedule with your private lesson teacher, and make sure that that they they know your schedule as well. And I I am saying this with that that anybody to listen to this is probably probably taking lessons, and if you're not, why not? Why not? That's that's one of the things that's going to make make you better. Uh, get get somebody that's that's uh, being paid to be an influence in your life and help you help your growth um, go quickly. Okay. Um, um, next, organize your music. Know where to find it quickly. Have a folder for your band and ensembles, and a different folder for your etudes, warm up scales, and solo literature. That also infer, uh, means that you actually are do- using other things that are specific to the saxophone that help you help you out. If you don't if you don't know what that is, get with your private lesson teacher and uh, start building up a repertoire of of etudes. Uh, the Fairlings are great. The Voxman Selected Studies perfect place to start. Uh, getting some duets. Uh, the Voxman's got a couple of a couple of duet books that um, that you can play with your buddy. Uh, next to you, have those in in a separate folder where you can access them quickly, and uh, and always make sure you buy your own solo literature because later on in life, uh, it really is important that you you have it. Uh, next, playlists. I put this on here because I think this is uh, now a part of our 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 culture today. Is is we need to organize our listening, and so make sure that you have. Um, Different playlists set up on whatever listening (laughs) format you've got, such as classical saxophone soloists, jazz saxophone soloists, um, other instrumental solos, violin, piano, flute, um, chamber music, quartets, trios, sax choirs, string quartets, um, piano trios. And if you haven't listened to any of those kind of chamber music, just use those references and 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 you'll you'll be amazed at the music that you run across. Uh, large ensemble classical. So in other words, wind ensemble, orchestra, movie scores, musicals, opera, uh, choir. Listen to all of it, and then and then certainly not last, and certainly not least is big band jazz. Make sure that you're listening to some big band. Absolutely. Go. Oh man, go back. Go all the way back to the Duke Ellington, Count Basie oh. days. 
Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then and then all the way through. And 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 I I I I'm putting this out there because if you start organizing now, you get a system in place for where they're organized. Then much later, all you're doing is adding. So this year will be your setup. And then you'll just have that and for, for much later. What do you think, Eric? Uh, you think we hit a few good things? Yes, all of those were very, very good goals, very good things to do. Awesome. And, and, and uh, Speaking of goals. Yeah, <laughs> and actually that's our next topic. So, um, so uh, yeah, yeah, I mean – I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and 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 do some things here. I want to talk a little bit about um goals, but I think we should bounce back and forth you and I sure. Eric here on this one. Um I I set up folks, if you don't have a goal, there's no reason for you to be organized. And and so we need the end results in mind. And now there's two goals that I want you to have. And you don't have to be exactly right with this. Just write down the goals and try to meet them. If goals change, that's only because you learned that your goal wasn't maybe as big as it needs to be. Or maybe it was way too big and you just need to, you need to focus a little bit. That's fine. Um, I don't, you know, you can, you can, there's lots of resources for what type of goals are out there. But I'm going to do, there's two sets. Number one is fundamental improvement. And then the second is performance goals. So um, I'm just going to quickly say fundamental improvement is basically your attention to articulation, armature, tone, finger movement, air, flexibility, tone, overtones, altissimo, uh, scales, um, patterns, uh, and, and then any combination of all of those, and then now how, f- like speeding them up and how fast can you do them? <laughs> right. You got, you got anything no, to add to that? And making sure you're doing it, uh, with the three it's in mind, of course. <laughs> nice reference. If you don't know that, go back to a previous masterclass. Yes. And, uh, and, and, and that's true. That's the quality control and you can apply it to all of those. And, um, and, and part of that fundamental improvement um is uh apply the three it's and then record yourself uh, all the time make sure you listen back and then uh and then use the three it's to make a quality control on on whether it's it's being done accurately or not um and plan a weekly schedule focusing on each of the determined fundamentals, I, I, I couldn't stress this more that if you're not intentional about your practice, and so not only are we scheduling our practice now, but we actually want to outline some objectives to be able to accomplish in that session. And, uh, and make sure it's varied from day to day because working on the same thing over and over again, that is boring. And, uh, and uh, there's too much to work on for you to just do the same exercise over and over again mindlessly. Right. Uh, be thoughtful. Make it, make it, a, make it, it actually what would be great is if you made it in relationship to the literature that you're, you're doing. So, Eric, do you mind talking a little bit about the uh, performance goals that I, I established? Yeah, I mean, just as important, I think, as all of what you talked about is to think about some performance goals for the year. Um, you know, starting with, uh, say, large ensembles, you know, your, your band, uh, you're going to get some music from your professor or from your band director and take a look at it. There may be uh, some tricky parts in there that you need to work on, um, you know, that will help improve you as a player. Um, And then building off of that during the year, you may have solo and ensemble in mind. Um, uh, For me, there's been nothing more fun than playing in duets and in uh, 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 quartets, um, all of that, and and, and doing solo work as well. Those those kind of things are very important. So uh, you know, pick some music out for that. Uh, that can be really fun. Uh, maybe do a recital. Uh, don't wait until you get into college necessarily, or or if you're in college, um, you know, do an extra like a special recital. Um, going through that is such an important part of being a player and, and growing. Um, also maybe you got some gigs that you can line up, uh, getting out there and playing with other people is, is just a fantastic way to grow as well. Um, during the summer, there's uh, a lot of different things going on. There's camps, 
There's uh, potentially conferences throughout the year. Um, and then uh, think about recording, not just recording what Mark was talking about, all of your practice, but actually recording yourself doing a performance and getting that to a, a level where you like it. Um, you know, and maybe maybe you've got a friend who composes. Um, see if he wants to or she wants to write a work for you, and you can premiere that. Um, I think that's a that would be a, that's a cool thing to do. You know, um, yeah. yeah. All of those things are, are performance goals I'll, that just you know can it just makes it fun for you. Right, and 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 if you've got something to look forward to. Um, there's a reason for applying the fundamentals. And I, you know, exactly. uh, like it, you mentioned large ensembles. And so I, I think of band, you know, like anytime I've played any type of band music is that there are at times it's not, it's not always the most exciting part all the time. Mm -hmm. um, especially since saxophone is such a, a um, melding instrument blending role in the wind ensemble. But there's some times where there's some, there's some challenges that are thrown your way, whether it be articulations. I mean, uh, say a piece that's quarter note equals 180, and you've got 60 notes that you have to articulate all in a row uh, for, say, four measures in a row. Right there, I'm just telling everybody, uh, you might have to learn how to double time <laughs> if you want to get that done correctly. And the composer may not have been thought thinking about that because he might have just come cut and paste that over from the the trumpet part who <laughs> they double time. Or, or 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 even or even the marimba part or something sure, like that yeah. that happened but but no matter what it's in your part so you've got to learn how to do it so here's the challenge can you double tongue if not apply it to your fundamentals list and see if you can uh by the time the performance happens are you accomplished at it enough to be able to do that accurately and also with this okay, too the, you know the ensembles uh you learn to be a musician. So it goes beyond uh, maybe something that's difficult to play. It's hard to blend or to listen around you. And, and, and you learn a lot from, from doing those to, uh, towards being a, a great musician. Oh, yeah, exactly. And, uh, and so, so that's, that's going to push you. All those things are going to push you to, to uh, drive the technique, drive the things, because it's all about the music. Uh, it's all about being able to express yourself clearly on your instrument as if you were just talking about it, you know? And, and I feel like sometimes, sometimes we're not that clear with our words, but we can be even more clear. We can even say something musically that's, that, that can, in a few moments, that could take an entire book to talk about. And I feel, I feel a little bit like if you're not at that point technically where – where you're being able to speak clearly, that's, that's the whole point of developing and practicing and setting goals and making it happen. And so um, one of the things uh, I want to speak on quickly is the recording yourself. Uh, there is nothing wrong. We have so many formats where it is free and it is easy to put up your recordings. If you are working on a piece and you feel very confident with it, and please record it and put it on YouTube. Or on a SoundCloud or another format that uh, that can be kind of a time capsule for you. Post it, uh, and you know you can turn the comments off. You don't need to hear every every Joe, you know, slam or say whatever they want. You know, just because they they have a serious problem they need to deal with. It it really <laughs> you don't have to open yourself up, but you can turn the comments off and just put put it up there and uh, and share it with your friends, share it with your parents, share it with share it with the people that, that that are in your life that you you enjoy. And I don't know, you might it, it, every single time I you know we do that, it it, it brings a, a bigger level of encouragement. Some of my students have been really doing that a lot, and uh, it seems to dr motivate them considerably. So. Uh, use, use our new mediums. Okay. I'm moving on. And I just wanted to, chew, uh, say this one part and, uh, I'll get your help on this, Eric, but, uh, I'll just present it. Don't worry, be happy. I think, <laughs> and I, I, I need to say this clearly. I think this is a message for my students as much as everybody who's out there is don't worry, be happy. 
<laughs> I got to tell you, man, that that is such a great statement. And if you don't know what I'm saying, go look up Bobby McFerrin and uh, and hear him sing this, and you'll get the feel of what I'm talking about. Um, keep yourself from getting stressed. Um, one of the best things I can do, say to you is fix one thing at a time, allowing for ma- mistakes on the things you're not working towards. Uh, my teacher, Kellen Thomas, would say one thing, one thing, you know, and when you go through that and if you're working on the one thing, say it's just articulation that time and the tone suffered, but you, the articulations were where they needed to be. Well, don't worry about the tone. Fix that the next time. It's okay. Don't feel bad that something else went wrong. Fix the one thing that you need to fix. And then if it exposes some other stuff, don't feel bad. Just keep going on. Okay. um, Practice effectively. Don't waste time on meaningless run-throughs. I can't tell you how many of my students just start at the beginning. They get in about three or four bars and they... uh, 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 But I know I can make it. This happens. You start telling yourself lies. It starts going in your brain and you go, I can make it. I can make it. I know I can do this. Oh, I, it happened yesterday. I know that I can do this. Baloney. If you stopped, it was for a reason. And if you only made it another bar, what's the point? Go back. I know, right? Get, getting it once in practice, it's, you're probably not going to get it again. You need to get it. It doesn't every count. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't count. So, so, so. Meaningless run-throughs have to stop. Know when you're not going to be able to make it, and then don't even go do a run-through. Don't even, don't even test yourself because who really cares? You're wasting your time if you do it. I love doing a, a run-through. If I'm, if I'm working on a new piece that was given to me and I have to get it done, I love doing a run-through. The very first five minutes that I play through that piece, if it's a five-minute piece. And then I go back through, and and then all I do is go from section to section, phrase to phrase, measure to measure, note to note. Yes, that's right. It actually boils down to two note exercises. We we can talk. uh, I think that'll be a good episode, Eric, at some point. And... uh, and so, so there, there it is. So don't, don't waste time by just practicing efficiently. No, try to anticipate what's going to be a problem. Just stop, slow it down, go really slow, fix it, move it up to tempo, and then put it with some other, maybe, maybe the other stuff around it's easier. Okay, just focus on the hard thing, get it up to par, and then go to the easier stuff and then, and then see if that takes, it takes you time. But and uh, there's a lot of different practice methods and whatnot. Hopefully that you can unpack that yourself and, and test it out and see, see what works for you. Um, next, go to live performances. YouTube does not constitute uh, a substitution for being there in per- person. Uh, I love YouTube. I think that some of the live performances that have been posted, I mean, I'm not going to Moscow anytime soon to go watch a saxophone performance. I know I don't have that kind of, um, uh, resources to be able to just fly out and, you know, catch, catch a few, catch a few, uh, concerts, uh, out there in the, in the square. Uh, don't, that's not going to happen. And so if I get a chance to watch some performances in Russia, Germany, Italy, Spain, Japan, I, uh, I'm, I, uh, I gotta tell you, I'm truly blessed. Even anywhere across the United States, it's, it, it's, it's really, it's really awesome that we have this opportunity to see what's going on around the world. But it doesn't substitute for going to live performances in your community. So make it a point to make it at least once a month. You go see something live, and preferably make it as something that includes saxophone. Okay. Um, promote. Here's another thing about um, being happy in music and not worrying too much is promote the work of a friend. If a friend is a composer, if a friend is a performer, I don't care if they play saxophone or whatnot, 
add to the community and promote someone else. Tell somebody else what good work is going on. Uh, I can't tell you doing this podcast is so much <laughs> fun because we get to promote some other people who are doing some cool things. Don't it's you a think, really Eric? good feeling, Mark. It's uh, just highlighting what's going on out there uh, is just it's a wonderful thing. Uh, it helps everybody. Helps yourself. Helps your friends. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey, I, I you know, it, it makes me wake up in the morning and go, hey, what, who, who yeah. are we recording today? What are we <laughs> yeah. doing? You know, it, it, it really is a lot of fun. And so you could do that in your community by, you don't have to run a podcast. I mean, this is pretty time consuming, folks. Uh, all you have to do is tell somebody else about how good someone else is doing with their music with uh with 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 how they play even if it's just like you heard an improvement in tone mark it make the statement and if you help someone else be happy today about music and you let them know that something's going right you're going to feel good about yourself and be very motivated about what's happening and then uh the last thing i wanted to say is create Music is a living, breathing entity, and new expressions are formed every single day. This is only the beginning of the best time in history of music. And I encourage you to go ahead and write, improvise, or reinterpret something with you in it. Make a musical statement. And the fact that you're getting out there and being creative today means you're a part of this music thing. You don't have to wait until, you know, somebody props you up on the stage at Carnegie Hall and uh, in order for you to say that you've made it. You know what? You have made it if you put your instrument uh, to use in creating an expression today because today's expression is the right expression. It can be more refined, and that's what that's what you setting goals and going back and making sure uh, you, that you're organized and getting the job done. You can refine this, but if you're not creating today, then then you missed out on a perfectly good opportunity to to share that with someone else and and uh, and express uh, what what you were made to be as a musician. So go ahead and 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 let it rip. You got anything to add, Eric? No, uh, that's, that's good, Mark. I mean, really what we're trying to do is help people uh, uh, just in, in setting goals and being able to play your instrument and, 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 and just have fun with it throughout the year and, and progress. Look, I, I like to tell some people that I'm, I'm around one thing, um, and, and I think this is, this is the – it's kind of a benchmark. Um, Take a snapshot of where you are today. Think about where you are. Record yourself where you are. And then one year from today, record yourself and listen to, listen to both. Are you better one year from today? Have you made progress? And then the question is how much? Now, I don't say that to be make you, you know, neurotic or think, you know, get all get all bent out of shape again relax be happy you're 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 in music you're winning uh you you've won the lottery as uh dr Rhonda taylor says um <laughs> i and so so with that if you're better one year from today you're really in the game you're doing it uh if you feel like you can improve that will be your next set of goals on what you do and you allow that to drive yourself um, I believe if we look at some of the, the our, our great musicians who are out there doing it, who are applying these principles, they um, uh, it's fun to watch uh, be around anybody who happens to be 80 and above who's still playing music. And I think if you're at that point, a lot and they're still learning, they still want to know uh, know what's uh, you know what you can do better. <laughs> And you gotta you gotta absolutely love that and and see that's a character trait. It's not a that's not a um, that's not part of the craft. 
per se. That's actually a character trait that musicians portray. And I, and I just encourage you to get in that culture and uh, don't be neurotic about it. Don't get, don't beat yourself up. Don't, you know, don't, if you need a break, take a break. You know, you, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. It'll be fine. Take a deep breath. And, but, um, but if you want to be better the next year, make some goals and, and set out and go and accomplish it. And then, uh, and then let, let that snowball from there because it is, it is a fantastic thing. Eric, thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. For the, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, Some of the, some of the additions it's, it's, um, I, I really enjoyed doing these, um, because, because I feel like there's quite a few people who are, or maybe some light bulbs are going on and we hope uh, so. We hope it's so. a good thing. Yeah. Well, with that folks, uh, I hope that this school year is absolutely the best you've ever had. And, and I hope that, that it finishes better than what you planned. And so, uh, with that, get that calendar out, get planning, call your li- private lesson teacher And uh, most of all, get practicing and have some fun. Take care. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Modern Saxophonist Podcast. You can find us at www.themodernsaxophonist.com. We're also on Twitter at